Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing a line and wash painting inspired by this beautiful photograph of an Irish harbour. I'm going to simplify the photograph and here it is drawn out on my um, Saunders Waterford hot pressed paper. It's taped to my board. My board's at 45 degrees and now that it's sketched out loosely but correctly and accurately um, on my watercolour paper I'm going to take some fine liners and a sharpie and do the line work. Um, the fine liners that I'm going to use are Faber Castell Pitt artist pens. They're filled with Indian ink and they're waterproof and I find them and their range of widths and sizes really really useful for line and wash. This one is a 0.5 size and then I'll be using a brush pen which gives me a lot darker marks and as well as that for um, quick coverage and a large nib I'm going to be using a sharpie black permanent marker and that will help me to fill in some of the areas nice and quickly. Now to start with I'm just cutting around um, the ropes that go across the front of the boat um, and leaving the white of the paper where those ropes will come down to the sand um, because I want them to look nice and fresh so I'm going to concentrate on that detail to start with and then I shall work around the boat using all three of those different marker pens as described just now um, for various jobs um, for getting in my line work and building up my darkest darks. I think the most important thing when you're doing a line and wash is to remember that you're working mostly with three tones. The very first tone is your lightest lights and that's the white of the paper and so it's worth thinking about which areas you want to keep white. For example here there's some marks on the you know, most of the cabin I want to be white. Um, some of the ropes where they cross dark areas will be white and I might use white gouache at the end to highlight those but sparing out enough white of the paper or very pale parts of the sky for example is very important. The, the ink work creates our darkest darks. So in that way it's very different from normal watercolour painting where you start off generally um, working through um, your lightest colours and ending up with your darkest tones and accents. I'm going to put in all these dark tones and accents first, um, including um, the outline. And that's the interesting thing with line and wash. Um, means you can really enjoy the drawing side of the painting um, to start with and focus on using um, different weights and types of lines to give you the textures and the tones that you need to add shape and form to your painting. So that's the darkest darks that I'm putting in and I'll focus on the drawing um, and get it looking as accurate but keeping it nice and loose if I can. And then finally once I've finished my line work then my mid-tones will all be put in using paint. You can of course put in dark tones with your paint um, but it's mostly the mid-tones that will go in. Um, the dark tones I prefer to put in with my um, my ink pens to start with. This is um, a sort of an abbreviated version of a full length two part tutorial that's over on Patreon, which shows in real time sort of every pen stroke and then every brush stroke of the painting with a more in depth commentary and tutorial. So if you think that would be the sort of thing that you'd be interested in, please follow the link below.
So as I continue with the line work, I've now moved from the boat onto the harbour arm and I'm trying to get in enough shadows um, and enough texture and line work to kind of indicate the harbour arm, but I want it to be pushed back behind the boat. I want it to sort of just sit quite sort of quietly, not drawing too much attention to itself. Um, so I'm going to try and keep it fairly um, undetailed compared to the boat. I'm pulling across some of those ropes down into the sand because I think the ropes are quite an important thing that leads the eye across from the left bottom left corner up to the boat and then across the harbour and towards the sea. So I'm just going to get those ropes in and then work on some of the detail, just a few sort of something and nothing lines across the beach. And skimming the pen across the hull uh, for a bit of hatching and cross hatching to add a bit more tone, leaving plenty of um, white paper between the marks that I make because I want to fill the hull in with a nice rich red. So I don't want to black out much of the hull. I want plenty of room for that red to really sing and create my boat focal point. And it might seem like it takes a long time to do a drawing for a painting like this or the line work. And I mean, let's be honest, it does. It takes quite a while. It took me about half an hour to do this one in total. But um, I think it's worthwhile bearing in mind that when you do a line and wash painting, um, nearly all the hard work is done by the line drawing. Once you've got the line drawing and all the darkest darks and textures drawn in, you really don't need to do very much painting at all. You just need to use a few carefully placed light washes of paint in the right places, mostly mid-tones, as I've said before, leaving some areas a lot lighter, and then to focus on some sort of brighter, stronger touches of paint in your focal point. But you don't really need to do very much in the way of painting. Uh, it's definitely a less is more thing. So nearly all the time and thought goes into the drawing itself and the line work. So I'm building up the harbour wall a bit more, sort of indicating with just lines and marks that sort of something and nothing of things going on on the harbour wall. And then hatching in around the hull of the boat, just darkening up the harbour arm so that the boat stands out even more. I'm skimming the pen across with horizontal lines to indicate where the tide has gone out and then the sea just beyond that harbour arm. Now this is the headland beyond and I'm keeping my fine liner uh, very light, just skipping it with hit and miss lines and dots across sort of the horizon um, keeping it very pale and putting in a distant line of hills and there'll be some trees there. Now I don't want this to be as dark as the boat and the harbour arm. If I put that in in the same sort of line weight with the same emphasis then I think it would look quite confusing so I'm keeping that nice and light. Now I'm going to put in my masts making sure that they're at the right angle for the tilt of the boat as it sits in the sand at low tide. And 
And now I'm going to put in these two lamp posts on the harbour arm. Just keeping the lines nice and sketchy. Again, it's that kind of hit and miss with the with the um, fine liner so that you get that kind of suggested loose line. And then finally, a few slightly darker, but still faint hatching marks, darkening up where the hills meet the sea and adding in just a few darker areas to indicate maybe sort of trees covering the hills in places in the background. And I think that will just about do for the line work. And now to let the ink dry off completely. Um, this is quite quick drying, but it's always best to leave it for five or 10 minutes, just in case um, any of the thicker areas have taken a bit longer to dry. Now with my large um, flat harky brush made of bamboo from a set of three that I bought from AliExpress, um, I'm going to wet the painting all over, cutting around the cabin and the boat um, so that I keep that dry. And then when I put in my sky and beach washes, um, I won't get any paint, running the risk of having any paint over the boat because I want to paint that in later. Now this is raw sienna and I'm unevenly sweeping it, um, sort of tube consistency, across the sand and then weaker mix of it across the sky. Now this is cobalt blue and I'll sweep on some Venetian red and mix those colours together on the page backwards and forwards to give me that interesting nice shadowy late afternoon early evening sky. I'm working quite quickly here. And once it looks about right, then I shall leave it alone um, so I don't overwork the sky. And then using the same colour that's still on my brush, I get some shadows in across underneath the harbour arm and the boat and across the beach. And then a strip of water behind the boat, just below the headland keeping it nice and pale. Got a little bit of a mark there in the sky. I'll see if I can get rid of that. No, I think that's just stained the paper. So I'm going to leave that alone and ignore it because if I fiddle with that, I'll probably ruin my sky. So I'm just going to accept that. I could cover that with a boat if I wanted to. Now this is a pale mixture of perylene green just to put in those distant hills. I want them to be nice and cool and pale so I get good aerial perspective and that they don't distract from the boat. So I'm trying to build up my scene in my foreground, but still keeping the washes nice and transparent. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, I want shadows, but I want some nice uh, sort of wet sand effects. A little bit of blue across for the, where the tide has gone out beyond the harbour arm then dropping in some colour across the harbour arm wall keeping it as simple as possible you could of course sort of take more of an approach of 
colouring in if you want to with a line and wash. Once you've drawn in all your details and your line work, you could just simply carefully colour things in, so to speak, with the paintbrush. But I think I prefer my washes to be more sort of overall and um, softer so that my line work dominates and my watercolour washes just really sort of back up the line work, if you know what I mean. And again, as I often do, this is um, a limited palette painting. The only colours that I've used are raw sienna, cobalt blue, Venetian red, a little bit of perylene green for the hills, um, a tiny bit of perylene green um, across the foreground just to sort of bring some harmony to it and then some alizarin scarlet lake when i come to paint the boat so really it's just to say a very very limited palette which gives me a really good range of colors because i'm using primary colors i suppose um, plus the perylene green so i've got my raw sienna is my yellow got my cobalt blue and I've got two reds. I've got my Venetian red and this beautiful alizarin scarlet lake which is going to give me such a, a lovely focal point for my boat as I paint it unevenly across the hull using a, a clean damp squirrel mop to soften things back a bit. I'm being careful to keep the paint nice and rich and dark at the front of the hull and then keeping plenty of white space and maybe some dry brush across the back half of the boat so that I sort of building up the roundness and the shape and form of my hull. I'm adding some touches of blue into the hull as well because I've noticed that there are some in the photograph and I think that brings a nice little touch of weathering and interest into the colour that I'm using on the boat. And I shall put a, a, a small amount of that same red across the sand in front of the boat so it's like the whole colour is reflecting in the wet sand a bit. Knock that back with the tissue if it's too bright, just for that little hint of colour there. And once I've got enough depth and interest and weathering into the look of the hull, then I shall do some highlights on the ropes with um, nice thick fresh white gouache on my small Chinese calligraphy brush and just use that to pull out um, just some lines and dots here and there where my ropes are slightly obscured by the background now and just a few highlights here and there on the boat just subtle nothing too overt just to help things to stand out a bit more a few little marks on the mast Just a little bit more work on the ropes. So it's these finishing touches, if they're carefully done, they can really make the painting pop. And then a bit more of the white gouache on the ropes so that they stand out against the dark of the harbour arm. And here's the finished painting. I've removed the tape so you can see it with its nice clean white border and I think it shows up quite nicely. I'm really pleased with the way it's worked out. Um, I do like my interpretation. I think the line work has worked really nicely giving us those strong tones but still nice loose suggestive line work and not too fussy or detailed. And the paint, especially on the hull, has really drawn attention to the focal point of the fishing boat. And the ropes lead our eye into the boat and across the scene. 
So I hope you found that useful. Um, please give us a like and a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and if you want to see more of this sort of video um, and click on the bell icon if you want to be notified when I post which is two or three times a week and thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel and I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.